This is the War Room Roundtable podcast, the show that takes you around the world to share interviews with some of the most successful and relevant businessmen and women on the planet, hear their stories, and get the most important business lessons they've learned on the road to success, and get exclusive advice on how to implement their successes into your life and business. The War Room Roundtable is brought to you by your hosts, Jason Miller, CEO of Strategic Advisor Board, and Philip Llanos, CEO of Own the Rhythm, and former podcast host for Entrepreneur and Inc. Magazine. Welcome to the War Room. Awane, how are you doing today, man? Doing very well. Doing very well. How are you? Doing good. Doing good. I'm really happy that we got a chance to chat beforehand, uh, knowing that we have friends in common and uh, how that related. And I'd like to start this question first off with uh, with the one I always ask everyone when we kick it off, and that is, do you come from a family of entrepreneurs? More so to see the influence of where it came from, you know? Well, there's a, there's this law I know is called the um, law of the prisoner. So I would, I would be meticulous and say that I came from a family of business owners. I don't know if they were necessarily entrepreneurs because uh, it's kind of like that, you know, first, first to be there, last to leave, you know, like all on top of like everything, no redundancy about them in the business, things of that nature. So, but yes, I had, um, similar to another interview I think you did in, in June, I had both of my parents, they both had separate businesses, um, both kind of in the healthcare space. Wow. Okay. And so you saw all that growing up and immediately knew that you were going to be going in a similar direction or was it not really something you were interested in for whatever reason? Yeah, I, I knew it was something I was going to be interested in. in high school. I started doing some little eBay and like, so I, you know, I thought I had my little independence. And so I was kind of looking to continue that. Um, didn't actually start the first. So I guess just backtrack. I didn't actually start with them being in business. We kind of started the the first business whenever I was right about when I was about to when I was starting college. So then it was like I was immediately in the entrepreneur space all, you know, ever since then. So I never like had like a job. I was working. Well, I guess I was working with um, with them before, but it just kind of started progressing into a point where it was like, OK, like I don't think I'm ever going to really go into the job force um and try to go up that would i'm just going to figure it out um and i guess that influence definitely helped with that that's cool to, to be able to say that, that's actually pretty cool and so what was one of the first things you did when you decided like in college like this is what i'm going to do what was the first thing because everyone we've talked to has had at least maybe three maybe two things that they tried crashed and burned but it made them uh better and then they're in another company now so what was your first uh attempt uh, so my first attempt is still going as a um, health practice. Um, started a like entertainment um, company because people were basically always like staying and living and partying at my house, and so we're like we might as well like start like actually doing this and like throwing parties. And so we started doing all kinds of like frat and sorority parties and bar mitzvahs and giveaway events and proms and type. So I was kind of balancing those, and then. Ended up now when the failure started rolling was whenever those things started were going well and I was like okay well yeah let's just do like a record company too like it's like rappers you know singers I'm like let's come come on I I could do that too and then it was like try to, I got a gas station and then that crashed and then I had to like a, a was it like an autism center and then they ended up like stealing our paperwork and then I had like a home health and this other lady ended up like. She was like a Jehovah's Witness, but like stole all of her money. <laughs> yeah, it's just like story after story. It was just like, my goodness, man, this is this is this is rough out here. But and then started a solar sales company at some point as well. And then, like I said, the company that uh, that I started in California with David as well. So it's been it's been a lot of like failures in between, and then there's been the consistent things that have led to um, the residual income that allowed me to be able to take such. Um, ambitious risks. I see. So you sort of uh, you tried to spread out your your efforts too early, took too much on too early without actually 
Uh, yeah yeah wow okay hold on i'm gonna turn it i'm gonna turn it over to jason now yeah yeah before i go any further (laughs) no it 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 is the entrepreneurial story right it 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 totally is right because any anybody that's successful in in business or as an entrepreneur or whatever the case may be if you tell me you just knocked it out of the park the first time and it was great i'm gonna call you a liar (laughs) Um, because it's typically not i mean i'm sure there's a small percentage that that happens to but they've probably stuck with one thing i mean most people are they're raising something up well enough to then diversify their portfolio into something else and then into something else because that's how you obviously you create true passive income right so um like with all my companies they didn't all just you know, boom overnight, voila, hey, you're a millionaire, right? Whatever. Um, no, it takes time, right? So, and a lot of failure. I always tell people if you're going to start a business, get ready to get kicked in the face nine times for the 10th time to work out. <laughs> so, but that's just the truth. And there, there you go. You're a perfect example of it. Same thing. Yeah, man. So, knowing that about you and having that context, and then asking, what are you focused on right now these days that the listeners should know about? Uh, well, I actually, I would say, uh, what is it called? Like the the Challenger Sale, the book called Challenger Sale. I would challenge what Jason said just a little bit because where, <laughs> I'm, where I'm at on it is actually trying to like um, educate, I guess, mostly, you know, millennials and Gen Z around like uh, like being an entrepreneur, but also being like very like, um, holistically healthy because I feel like what I, what I what I came up in was kind of like that that grind you know like um, um, let me let me tell you a sad story because uh, so what at one point I was reading I think it was Elon's book or maybe it was just like some YouTube videos back when I was uh, like like I said locked in this office um, kind of running back between school and and, and running this business and um, they were like, oh, yeah, Elon used to like sleep in his office. So at some point, I was kind of done with people at the university. Anyway, it was too much drama. I don't even want to get started with that. But, you know, I was like, OK, let me just let me just start sleeping at the office. So I did that maybe for like two years. I don't know how long I was there. I mean, I would like sleep at the office. Sometimes I would like oversleep and like people like coming into the office in the morning. I'm like running in the like the bathroom trying to like change my clothes. I'm like, damn, I was like overslept because I was doing too much. So then, like a few years later, I ended up in Silicon Valley getting mentored by this guy Tim Draper, who's like a famous uh, VC out there. And one day, you know, he knows Elon. They he invested in him early. Da da da. da. And so we're do- playing like this little game. And ideally, I guess you're supposed to try to raise like this little. It's like a little business game, and you're trying to like raise money, build your little company, and around your little small group. And so he's coming around as like the taskmaster, and he's just like. Hey, you know, uh, I need the rent money, and I was like, no, no, we don't. We, we, you know, I was like, we, uh, we're, we're sleeping in the office. He's like, oh, you can't do that. I said, Elon did it. He said that's the story he told, and just walked off. I was just like, dude, like, <laughs> it just like crushed me. Like, what do you mean? Like, I lived in my office for years because of that story. Like, I was like, what do you mean? It's not a real story. And so that started getting me into understanding just, just so much about entrepreneurship things of nature is the stories that we tell you know whether or not it's you know moral or all that is 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 a side conversation but i'm just saying like it's it's that story like what is this hero the entrepreneur whether it's just in their family as like a family man and it's just the family cousins and everybody knows oh that's that's uncle jason or that's uncle philip you know you know how he is man he got his own thing going he doesn't work like normal people you know like i want to be like him you know like whatever this story is everyone's building that story and so i just again with someone like david what we started questioning was how can that be like a healthier story where you in the healthcare industry we see this so often where the practitioners themselves are not actually as that healthy like it's like how are you going to be giving someone advice about health and you don't take care of your own health <laughs> it's just the wild Outside smoking cigarettes yeah <laughs> <laughs> the wildest thing man and it's just like they're like stressed running around and then they show up in the patient room like what do you want like it's like well i'm like <laughs> sick and i came here to never help like, yeah. you know so yeah so i mean again within reason but i definitely am somewhere in the middle of like trying to keep this balance i know i know that also 
it's another quick thing you know every generation try to keep that visionary mindset every generation kind of lives older so it's like we our generation kind of has this period of like let's let's be healthy and entrepreneurial like let's be smart understand that we have all this information and so be very strategic on how we make sure that we get into strategic debt and things of this nature not just chasing income and cars and flash and all the cool things that you could have if you're doing your own thing it was just because obviously some people get caught in that um that kind of race oh wow you said a lot of things there uh you said a lot of things that are sort of like low-key in particular with like strategic debt and it's a conversation that is definitely not had in public schools, public education. That's one of the right. first things uh, you don't find. I think I just read that Florida is making it like mandatory to graduate high school. You have to know all those things like filing taxes and uh, like it's like a thing now that's in their codified law. So that's cool. And it's important because what you talked about there, I didn't learn till like maybe even last year as I started reading about it. The idea of being able to leverage debt and like whether it's a business taking out a small loan that is at a way different interest rate than a personal loan right. and you know how that works and the paperwork for all that so this is all now gearing towards uh sort of I, what we ideally would love to share with younger leaders who are up and coming right and then one other thing that i got from what you were saying among the many things that i want to highlight is we had spoken to some of your colleagues before, like you said, like with Reggie and David, and they also had this idea of like reshaping the conversation around athletic culture, right? Growing up and, and, and football and the, the, what the game is like. And now I hear you uh, also championing a cause of redefining what it means to be someone who is entrepreneurial or in business and what the lifestyle of that looks like. Mm -hmm. Right. Coming back to the narrative that you shared about the story and what they said, well, that's the story he told. Right. And it's funny because I, I have a history where I lived in, in, in an office specifically because I thought that would be the most fundamental way to make sure that I put myself in a situation where I want to work. All it did was make me depressed. <laughs> so that, that is a certified fact. If they could give certificates out for that, I would have a few of them. So. <laughs> I, I truly, truly appreciate that you brought that up without me having to ask about that uh, because I didn't even know that was a thing that you were on. And so when I asked you the question, like, what are you working on now? I can, I can, I can go expand that to not only what you're actually physically doing every day and what you're building, but what, you, what kind of mindset and mission, mission and message you're actually putting out there, right? Like you yourself are saying, one thing I'm going to make sure is people know this is how I stand. This is what I stand for. And so I appreciate that you went the extra mile to bring that up. And in this, in the name of the question I originally asked, what are you currently working on now that we know that context too? Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess um, in certain ways, I'm, I'm the beginning of what I said, I, I, you know, and it's, I guess it's learning each other in conversation. I was, I'm expanding what I was, I've been doing in the medical space um, and, you know, kind of in a sense, merging that with the wellness space. And uh, and really bringing in the the technology angle really strong. So that when I when I was in Silicon Valley for some years, and then in LA, you know, it was a lot of uh, technology influence. And so um, I'm I'm in a space right now to where I'm really mostly focused on leverage, a lot of a lot of speaking, a lot of podcasts, a lot of um, uh, of vlogging and things of that nature of lifestyle, and and looking more around being and growing as like a lifestyle guru so i have a lot of um content and educational programs and things of that nature and in the meantime being very patient with the uh with the family with the family um businesses right so one of the things in that regard um that to speak on business at a higher level is understanding like business structure and look at maybe like you know, instead of you maybe using me, you could look at like maybe like the Waltons or anything like this. Um, these examples of, you know, setting up a structure in which the family uh, is kind of like a family office that invests in certain projects, but those projects kind of fit within like a certain investment philosophy. And so that's those are the early stages of what I'm setting up now, mostly focusing on assets around the healthcare and wellness sector. And then with being the leverage that I'm growing is personally that allows there to be a lot more of a long-term um, uh, kind of like the long tail of the market. So I look at like the the part, you know, the the new age, what you'd call I guess a personal brand as being something that most people should have as part of their investment portfolio, even if they're already 
wealthy as a as a way to kind of like secure the bag like a way to understand that like okay like a lot of these other things can change and kind of can be taken away from you but what industry has shown not just from celebrity but just throughout history is that the leverage that comes from uh, like these, this law of influence where someone eventually has either like you know an acceptance of like for, from like a community of people which would be like okay yeah you can do this you can try this now I'll, I'll, I'll be down or even to be able to get to the point of admiration where people are um, you know obviously considering you someone that they would probably name their kids after so there's 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 that process that that I'm in as well so there's there's like the business side and then there's like the personal side and then there's like where they where they blend in because since I'm so focused on health wellness things of that nature it very much so um, coordinates pretty well with the the physical you know and and day-to-day -day business activities that I have I see so you want to build a platform where you emphasize a certain lifestyle and use that as part of your personal branding uh, meaning digital footprint and there's a lot there there is a lot of uh examples out there of people saying why that's more important than building a brand for like a org or your business like you just look at vayner media while we all know what that is we mm -hmm. only know what it is because we know gary vayner chuck is exactly. actually the one who's running it and when they asked him about it he said yeah always build your personal brand because wherever you go like you might exit and that brand will stay wherever it was, but your personal brand will follow you everywhere. That's a great example. I never thought of that one. That's 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 gold right there. Yeah, because you might. I mean, it's, you should have an exit strategy. Ideally, that's another big tip. That again, difference between a business owner and an entrepreneur very often is that if you don't already are not considering the end in mind, right? You can get caught up in the weeds. Yeah, and uh, and then there's a there's a great book called The Square and Tower. Uh, by Niall Ferguson. It's Neil Ferguson, but most people aren't going to read it that way. It's N-I-A-L-L. -L. Uh, and he it, he talks about how throughout history, which he was doing the, the, the research for, and he's an academic, so take it with a grain of salt, right? Uh, but essentially, he covers an entire history where he shows that people with the most loose ties in society had also the greatest impact, whether they knew or not, just through correlation of them knowing as many people as they did. So there's a lot of merit to what you're saying. And I, I was hoping we could, at the very least, uh, dive into some things that, since that's where you want to go with the conversation, what have you been learning about like the channels? Because right now, there was a moment, I want to say maybe three years ago, where LinkedIn was truly explosive in its organic growth, right? And as being able to build a personal brand on there was really easy if you like wrote articles, uh, made polls, right? But now everything is starting to turn towards TikTok mostly. And, and that's also because the younger generation is beginning to use that as a search engine and not Google. Kids who are entering the workforce are not using Google for many things. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll use YouTube and YouTube has become synonymous with Googling for them, right? It's between YouTube and TikTok and Instagram as search engines for being able to find information. That's where they're going. So this is what I understand. But as someone who's currently working on building a personal brand, I feel like it'd be a missed opportunity if I didn't ask if you could share some information for every entrepreneur who's listening right now about the idea of developing personal brand beyond, uh, beyond the, the general philosophy of how important it is. Right, right, right. Well, to get into the to get into some more serious, yeah, some like more details and grounded details about it, I'd say that um, first and foremost, because of the audience, I'd say that you everyone should really be looking to look at the technology as just that, like it's just a it's just a tool, right? So each of the platforms has a has a way in which it's algorithmized, or I don't know if that's a word, but algorithmized, you know. So like each of them has its own like if they were friends that you had right that be each of them are very different friends with a different kind of relationship so understanding that is first and foremost second is really understanding that you don't want to build yourself a job right so like an example is i was talking to a friend who who's friends with um jake paul and these these paul brother guys right and it was just they said they talked to them a few years ago and they were just talking about how, like to really be successful in that kind of way like you really it's like really really hard work and so most of the people I'm, I'm assuming probably already have businesses that are already hard work so what 
I've been looking to do is create a platform and create systems that allow me to basically automate it. Like it's just kind of my life. What I'm documenting from my life and the the brand, the philosophy, how we do things in this nature is just goes out to my team. And then everything becomes, again, very personalized for each of those platforms. So I would say that you don't want to build yourself a job. Like you want to find a way in which whatever it is that you do, you know, if you're going to, you know, do again something for personal branding that creates leverage, maybe like a book or, you know, have a podcast or you have, you know, whatever the case may be that you're doing. Um, figure that out like as the as the strategy and then don't look at it as oh, okay I just need to work 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 like maybe the other business that you have you want to look at it as how can I build the system in a way whether you got to hire consultants whatever the case may be where I'm just living my lifestyle and people are are attaching themselves to that because what social media shows number one today especially TikTok is that it's all about authenticity like a lot of the people don't even have like a lot of uh, editing and things of this nature Instagram is a little bit more edited YouTube um, is a little bit more like TikTok. like again this younger generation a lot of it is not even that edited it's really just how authentic is this person being are they really being vulnerable and showing us just their day-to-day -day life not like the the fluff of oh he never has like down days or he never has like a day that um, that's you know super celebratory acting like you're just even keel all the time like it's like no maybe you did you know cocaine on a Tuesday like I mean I'm not you know you were talking about Colorado earlier so uh, <laughs> you know I, I'm not saying that this generation is as much into that but I know the generation previous was because I've been around some people and I'm just like okay man I did not know <laughs> that this is what you were on um, especially in California but anyway that's, that's a side note but just to say yeah seriously it's really much more about authenticity, just showing the lifestyle that you're living. And then as long as you make sure that you're also doc like showing the results that you're having. So the actual numbers, lot as much transparency as possible, not considering, not to being too worried about competition and who might see it. The, the point is that people attach themselves to brands on these social media platforms that are being as engaging with them as possible. And the easiest way to do that is to just be as transparent on what you're already doing and then like I said have the systems in place that are able to you know sustain that that happening you know just just like you set up this other business where you can set it set it set it up the same type of way think about the type of positions of people that you want what they would um, what their incentive packages are so on and so forth I see so you're saying one one tactic in the overall strategy of personal brand building on social media would be to uh, think more meta in the sense that if you're going to be scrambling and struggling to make a video concept, then record the fact that you're struggling and scrambling to make a video concept and put it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every 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 piece of the journey. I mean, sometimes it depends on when you release it. I mean, is is always you know a personal choice. You know, sometimes you know they do the bloopers after the movie. Right. Sometimes they release bloopers kind of before movies, right? Just to kind of give you the fun behind the scenes before the movie. So it's it's up it's up to you. But that's the that's the mindset. You know, it's like you're putting on a production in a sense. So looking at it as as that people, especially nowadays, they can flesh that out. And the more authentic that it is, they can flesh that out also. There's like an eye these youngins have now. It's like if I just get on there and I just I'm kind of like saying something scripted, you can see just that the algorithm like it's not it's not going to have the same kind of results as if you're just sometimes just candidly driving and the, the video is just there and you're just kind of driving and talking and it's just like people are like yeah man I feel that you know it could be seven minutes but it's it's something that people like feel they feel they feel it more in that way okay uh, before I go any further because I, I only really only have two other questions uh, in the interest of time I'm gonna turn it over to Jason just to see where he's at yeah <clears throat> I have seen firsthand exactly what you're talking about because we do a ton of content and nobody wants to consume this. Welcome today to <laughs> nobody cares. Nobody cares. Right. All they want is this authentic conversation. Like we're having now. Right. That's mm -hmm. what they want. They don't want all this curated content, all this stuff. And you just want to hear what, they need to hear, take that in, be able to compartmentalize it, use it, move out and, and take it and do whatever they're going to do with it. Right. So it's, uh, the, the days of the, 
you know, corporate company video. Hi, my name's Bill. And <laughs> right. nobody, care, nobody cares about that shit anymore. Right. I mean, hell, I'm not in that generation. I don't care about it. <laughs> right. So. And I think it's just because we're we're changing as people. Right. Uh, especially over the last couple of years. I mean, I don't know if that's an effect of it or not, but, but we're just changing as people and how we consume things. We just want it raw. Tell us like it is. So we can take that, do what we're going to do with it, get a result, and move on. Right. Um, and, and I like it. I think it's uh, I think it's a good thing because I like to just get on and not have to be prepped and have script and do all this stuff right now it's different if you're going to go on forbes and have a forbes interview right that's mm -hmm. a different thing because it's a different platform like you said platform right. matters right? Um, right but the everyday stuff i've seen that definitely over the last couple of years and you know you hear a lot of people say the the average attention span of somebody is seven seconds well, that's true, but people also still ben, binge watch Netflix, right? So they have an average attention span of seven seconds because you're freaking boring, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? So if people engage with you, then they're not going to have seven seconds of engagement time. So I, I don't necessarily subscribe to that whole seven second thing. If you're putting engaging conversation out, people will follow that. But if mm -hmm. you're just a boring, my name's Bill, and blah, 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 nobody cares, right? So, yeah. so know who you're talking to. Know your audience, who you're talking to, and you present yourself to that audience the way that audience wants to consume that content. That's what's important. Yeah. No, I... I I understand 100% where both of you are coming from. It's like, it's like, it's like uh, Barney being a grown man, you know? <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I definitely would love to see that. <laughs> we all know that it really is, but they never showed it. <laughs> yeah, it was like he, had to, he had to adapt it for that for that audience. It's just yeah. like you put, you put your thing on. It's like, all right, here we go. <laughs> like Blue's Clues Steve. We all know what happened with him. Yeah, yeah. Me, <laughs> yeah. hey. example number two. <laughs> yeah, Blues Clues now, they don't send a letter. They say, we just got an email. We oh, just got wow. an email. I they know, updated two, it. Yeah, they have, updated it. I have two young kids, so, you know. I, They're not even I like handy-dandy notebook anymore. It's like handy-dandy no. iPad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They're updating with the times. The next one will be, we just got a text message. We just got a text <laughs> or, message. Yeah, right, right, no, it's... Right. <laughs> We just got a Discord DM, yeah. No. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> no, man. Um. So, in in this period of time here, uh, I'm glad that we're having this open discussion about these ideas because they are things that are in people's minds constantly. Am I working too much? Am I not working enough? Right? Uh, how am I looking at general, like my health as a whole? Am I socializing with people enough or am I not? Am I socializing with the right people? I'm the average of the five people. What about, all of these voices, right? And then, oh, I got to be on social media. What does that mean? Well, how do I approach it? That's a whole part of life that like in particular with social media didn't even exist before for people or businesses. And so having as many open discussions instead of pretending like you got the secret and the lock on the entire game, like <laughs> that that's only going to make your life harder when you can literally use even that as the platform. Right. So I'm glad that we're having those discussions on this conversation. And I would love to know if you could go back to just before life started changing uh, and you were entering college and knowing what you know now, what would you say to yourself? Don't go to college, man. But um, <laughs> I, 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 man, that's a that's a deep question. I would say that uh, more than anything, man, is just like is is to fall in love with the process because you know the you know it's very it's like it's like a Kobeism Mamba mentality thing. You like, you know, fall in love with the process, fall in love. But I mean, it's a real thing though because you know so often I think along the way, you know, I was like 
some 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 things about starting early it, it kind of uh like like jason was saying it can it's that entrepreneurial like you, you have to have all these failures because I, early on, I was thinking, I was like, oh, man, you know, by 24, I'm reading, like, these books on, like, Zuckerberg and Bill Gates. I'm like, oh, by 24, man, it's going to be freaking on, you know, like, private jets and Maui and I'm buying it, you know, like, it was just, like, all these things. And uh, in reality, you know, it wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been the right time for it. It's not, like, the wants are not necessarily the needs. And so, like, falling in love with the process and actually finding like a simple KPI of skill, a skill that you're always building. So each and every day there's like a step that you know for sure you're taking is one of the things I've, I've definitely spoken to a lot of young entrepreneurs, especially men, you know, about that, where it's just like, you know, it's like they don't know what KPI they're paying attention to. So they don't really know if they made progress that day. They're like, oh, you know, I shouldn't have went and hung out with my friend. You know, I was stupid. You know, it's just like, well, I mean, <laughs> what? Like, it's like you have to do some of that, right? Like, and they're like, no, but these people didn't. I was like, bro, there's pictures of Steve Jobs and Bill Gates chilling and fighting over a girl, dude. Like, don't get it twisted. Like, these people were people also. Like, it's just the story that you hear. You're thinking, like, there's no way. Like, I don't have time for my mom. I can't talk to my dad today. I can't talk to my sibling. Like, it's like, we don't have time. We got to make money. Um, so I would say, yeah, fall in love with the process. Um, and, 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 you know, try, try to have some type of skill that you're consistently cultivating. I love that, so, man. Like, the ho- the Hollywood that's yeah. the Hollywood. That's the Hollywood. Jason talks about this all the time. <laughs> Hollywood, it's so Hollywood version, man. man. It's the whole, and there are a certain percentage of people that knock it out of the park the first time. It happens, right? Of course, there are exceptions it's to just, every rule. Yeah, there always are, but it's few and far in between for sure. So, yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I think it's, I think it's a great suggestion. Like, you can inundate yourself with all kinds of like goals and mantras and blah, 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 affirmations. And then, or you can say today, I know for sure I'm doing this one thing, no matter what. Right. Like the one thing, mm-hmm. I, like, even if you just did that, you'd be better off than most people who are just like, I don't know. I see what happens. I take life as it comes. And that's that. And no vision, no mission, no plan. Like that's one way to live. <laughs> you know, uh, it's also being able to choose at least one thing for sure. And, and, and call that your key performance indicator. Like this is how I know I'm performing in life just with this one thing. You're right. Keep it very simple, make it very easy. And now with the grand finale, as I roll it out, if you could have invited anybody to sit in and listen to the conversation, maybe even join, who would you have loved to have had here today? You know, I said I wasn't going to think about it until you asked it. So um, try, I was trying to work on this whole like intuition and, and being ready thing. But uh, man, 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 man. I For the audience, I was going to say something like Warren Buffett at first. But I think for the audience, I would say that my man, uh, Ty Lopez, man, he's kind of like Gary Vaynerchuk. Yeah. But like, uh, I think for like a, a, a business audience that's considering both personal branding and, uh, that, like I said, from my from my perspective, as well as like the solid, like, you know, when you start getting into, again, like convertible notes and debentures and like understanding the, the, the technical terms behind certain certain kinds of finance um, that allow people to be able to take on strategic debt in in a smart way and to be able to build generational wealth. I'd say, yeah, I'd say my man, Ty Lopez, I've, I've met him a few times, so hopefully he, he can like hear this somewhere and, you know, we'd be like, oh, okay, he's giving me a shout out, man. Maybe I'll, you know, pop up on him one day. That'd be cool. No, I, I think, I think that's a great choice. Not a lot of people, uh, there's like, it's like a mixed bag, right? Uh, people are polarized by Ty Lopez, uh, right. but, yeah, but yeah. The, regardless of whatever they feel, he does have success and you can't take that away from him, you know, and he does have mentors who were real grassroots from farming to, you know, like all that, like he's not, he's, he has a degree of Hollywood mostly because he knows that it's an essential element for a certain audience that he also wants to attract. And then the minute you get in behind the scenes with him, he immediately tells you it's not Hollywood, but he, but he knew that that was the bait he needed to catch people. And I, I took enough of an interest in him and research enough to learn that. So I think it's a great choice to bring up in particular for the audience. Like you said, those are my closing thoughts. I'll let Jason close us out. Yeah, this was a really dynamic conversation, right? It went a lot of different directions, which uh, there's a lot to glean from this conversation for sure. So I, I hope that the listeners caught all those little lessons, right? 
because a lot of lessons are very subtle, right? But you got to be listening. Listening is key. We do a lot of this, but the number one success tool you have are these two things right here, your ears <laughs> listening, right? It's not the mush in between the six inches, <laughs> right? It's the ears in between. A lot of times we need to practice listening and receiving more than talking. So I can tell you're a good listener. You're very attentive to listening um, with your, your mannerisms. And that's an art in itself. And a lot of people could use a lot of practice with that. So <laughs> for sure. So, but yeah, thanks for being here. It's great to have you on the show um, to, to drop some knowledge bombs on our audience. Um, and I always say, geez, you know, uh, we all got the same amount of time every week. You stop by, spent a little bit, bit of time with us. You can't replace time. So we appreciate you being here uh, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's an honor and a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, our awesome. pleasure, Awana. Cheers. All right, cheers. Thanks for listening to the War Room Roundtable with your hosts, Jason Miller and Philip Lanos. Please leave your feedback and visit strategicadvisorboard.com to get the latest and greatest business advisement on the planet. Follow us on social media for updates. And always remember, if you can dream it and believe it, then you can go achieve it. We'll see you in the next episode.